The topic for today is the goddess Chunda. But before we get into that, if you like this channel, if you find this, uh, this series of videos informative or interesting, then please press the like button or share with a friend. Uh, press subscribe. And if you're really interested in learning more, then you can join our, our HAR on Patreon account. And there we have uh, longer videos. We have videos that are not um, posted on YouTube. They're unique. We also have uh, essays and we have images that are also not yet posted on the Himalayan Art Resources website. So there, there's more information in general on the Patreon site and it is growing. We only started it uh, uh, recently, but it is growing. So, back to the subject, the goddess Chunda. Now, Chunda is not common in art. Chunda is, uh, is a really a minor uh, deity, a minor female deity, and uh, uh, occurs very rarely. But in Buddhism, Chunda um, is known, and in Japan and China and Korea, Chunda is quite popular. And there's different reasons for this, and they're primarily related to the uh, Mahayana Sutras. Well, we have th basically we have three types of Chunda in terms of appearance. We have a one-faced, four-armed form. We have a one-faced, eighteen-armed, and then we have a three-faced. 26 armed form. All of these are peaceful in appearance and they're they're all uh, three uh, depicted in a seated posture. The uh, the four-armed we have from numerous uh, Sanskrit sources. Uh, the three-faced 26 armed uh, we have also from an Indian source, but a little bit obscure, and I'm actually uh, not sure the early history of that of that uh, tradition or practice. Now, the 18 armed, I've not yet found a Tibetan version or a Sanskrit version that describes this, but uh, it is. We do have a Nepalese sculpture and we do have a Chinese sculpture uh, with the 18 arms, so uh, we know it exists. Now, where, where does really Chunda come from? Well, there is a, a text called the Incantation of the Goddess Chunda, which basically means the, the Dharani of Chunda. Uh, but we actually have another source. We have the, the quite famous Karanda Vyuha Sutra, which also where the mantra uh, for Avalokiteshvara comes from, the Omani Padme Hum mantra. Now, in this uh, sutra, the Karanda Vyuha, we also have a section that talks about how the uh, a tremendous number of Buddhas got together and recited uh, a formula, and this formula is the, the mantra uh, of Chunda. And so it is sometimes said that Chunda herself is the essence or the, the, the actual nature of the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. So that being said, then we can understand that, that the goddess, the, this uh, female form, one face, four arms or more arms, this is a, a, this is a Dharani goddess. Uh, this, is a, this is a deity that is actually manifested or created out of a mantra or a Dharani, these sacred syllables, uh, as opposed to uh, female goddesses who are born from the Ushnisha of the Buddha. So th this is just a little bit about Chunda. It, it's an obscure uh, deity in art. It, it really is obscure, and there are not a lot of uh, tantric teachings or, or extensive commentaries or mandalas. We have none of that in really in Vajrayana Buddhism. Uh, Chunda is primarily coming out of uh, the Mahayana Sutra tradition and the Mahayana Dharani tradition. So that's Chunda. 